to IT Track. My name is Boyd. We are in Bangkok, Thailand, and today we're going to talk about Cisco CCNA routing and switching exam 200-120. And what we'll do for you during this video is demonstrate how to download an iOS image from a TFTP server onto your Cisco device. In this case, a Catalyst 2960 switch. So we have a switch. We have it running iOS 12.2 at the moment. This is the iOS image file that it's currently using to load the iOS. And what we want is to upgrade the switch to iOS 15 and it will have the new iOS and we can tell it which iOS to boot from once it's on there, once it's downloaded into the flash directory. So. I have a little summary of what we're doing. Copy a new iOS from a TFTP server residing on our local area network. And here are a few of the commands that we're going to be using during this demo. So let's get right into it. The first thing I'll show you is I have a TFTP server running. Uh, it's a program called OpenTFTP Server. And this is it right here. It just shows it's listening on port 192.168. 1.101 port 69 uh, TFTP uses UDP on port 69 so it's sitting there waiting for us to connect to it and here is putty and I'm connected via the console cable on COM7 uh, so we'll just log into the switch and get started put the enable password in and what we can do first is run show version and see the current version of the iOS that we have running which is 12.2 and we can also take a look at the flash directory the contents of our flash and it shows that we have one image file in there and this is 12.2 iOS so what we're going to do is we're going to download another iOS from a TFTP server put it in here and we will then have two files that we can choose from and we are going to have to tell the iOS once it's in here which file we want it to boot from. So if we type in show boot, this will show us what file it's using to pull from to boot. The Cisco device is powered on. So the command to issue here is actually pretty simple. It's just copy TFTP, so we're saying from a TFTP server, flash to flash. And now it's going to prompt us for a couple parameters. The first one of which is what's the what's the IP address or the name of the host of the TFTP server? And we know what that is. It's 192.168.1.101. What's the source file name? So I had this written here. It's C920, C2960, dash, Lamlight 9, etc., etc. So we can just put that in there. Now it asks us what's the destination file name. By default, it's going to pick the one we just put in. We can rename it, we can make it whatever name we want, but keeping the original name is better for identification purposes. It just makes it easier, so there's really no reason to change the name. So we'll hit enter. So now he's going to go out there and try to connect to the TFTP server. And we can kind of watch what he's doing over here. So he's got a couple errors. He's trying to get through. And now we can see that he has established a connection. And the exclamation point here means he's pulling that file chunk by chunk. So we'll give it a minute. I'll pause the video while it does this. And we'll come back when it's finished. Okay, so it finished copying our iOS image file from the TFTP server. And as you can see, it says via VLAN 1. What it's doing here is it's using the IP address of VLAN 1, which I configured. And I can show you that real quick. We can do show IP interface brief VLAN 1. 192.168.1.6. So it uses that to go out to the TFTP server, which is 192.168.1.101, and that's how he establishes connection and pulls the file. 
So now if we look at our flash, we should have two iOS image files in there, and we do. We have the first one here at the top, the original one, the 12.2, and now we have the second one we just pulled, which is 15. Now what the iOS will do by default is it will pick the lowest numbered iOS listed and it will it will run with that one it will boot that one we can see it will always pick the first one because it's got a lower value it's got a two and the one we just loaded has a six uh, so it's basically first in line so we can override this we can do a couple things one we could just delete this original iOS image and if there's only one it will only have one to choose from and it will by default pick this 15 but we can also just change the boot option and I had that written down here so I'm just going to copy and paste it in there but it basically says boot the system from the flash and, and use this file so we have to configure terminal first and if we just paste this in here it will reset that value to boot from the image file that we want. So I'll write to terminal. And now if we do the show boot, it's going to show the new value that we just put in. So we're forcing it to use this image file. We're saying skip the first one in the list. Choose the one we're picking, which is the, the later image file, the 15. we can prove that this is actually doing what we want it to do we can reload the switch and that's what we're going to do at this point reload proceed with reload confirm hit enter yes and we'll let this reboot and I'll pause the video again okay so our switch is now reloaded we're gonna log in and we're gonna run the show version command again to make sure that we have the iOS loaded that we really want well, we can already see it. For those of you looking at the top, it shows it's just booted 15, but we're going to go in there and run show version anyway. So I'll log in again. Show version. And version 15. So it is loading the latest iOS that we put on. And I will mention, the most difficult thing about this whole process is getting all the networking set up right. Making sure you have the right cables uh, if you're using the console, you have a console cable to making sure that the TFTP server is set up right, that there's communication between your switch and your TFTP server. The rest of it is really kind of a piece of cake. You just type in a few commands and it does all the work. So I hope you got something out of this video. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time.